Hey, I'm RC, and in this video I'll be covering object-oriented programming in TypeScript. So one thing to know about TypeScript is that it handles object-oriented pretty much the same way than the other type languages like c -sharp and Java. And as you will be able to see, it's a lot simpler and straightforward than in JavaScript. In this video, I'm assuming you're already familiar with object-oriented programming in general, and if not, I would highly recommend you to click the annotation on the screen to go check out my video about it. So the first aspect of object-oriented programming is declaring or creating a new class slash prototype. And when you do that, there are different aspects to consider. So you want to create your new class. You need to have a constructor. You want to have properties that will be linked with your instance, functions that will be linked with your instance, and um, also want to have static properties. So properties that only exist once for the entire class and the same goes for functions. So in JavaScript, this is how it would look. So you have your constructor with your instance properties, instance um, function, static property, and static function. So this, the equivalent of this in TypeScript would look something like this over there. So in TypeScript, there is a bunch of new keywords. There is the class keyword. So you do class and then the name of the class, the instance, um, Property goes up there. Then you have a constructor with the constructor keyword. You can put whatever you want over there. Um, if you want to create a instance function, you just put the name and then the bracket, and then you can put the content. You can also do equal function. This also works. Um, after that, for everything static, so that only exists once for the entire class, there is the keyword static. So this is a static property. If I remove the static, then every point will have its own list. And for static function, once again with stats. So another important aspect is inheritance. So creating a subclass that is based on an existing class. So when we do that, there are a few aspects we want to um, consider. So when we do inheritance, we want to be able to add new instance properties and function to the existing class. We may also want to override um, the properties and the functions. So they do um, a different action. And we still want to be able to use the, um, the super class function. We'll be more clear with um, the example. And finally, we may want to add new static properties and functions. So this is how it would be done in JavaScript. So let's say I want to create a circle class, which is a point with a radius. So radius is a new instance um, property. Then we override the prototype, then set the constructor, then we add new instance functions. And we can also override instance um, functions. For example, back then the transform was setting the X and the Y. Now the transform calls the previous one. So this is the call super class function. So this is how you do it in JavaScript, and then I can add my custom stuff over here. Then I can add new static um, properties and finally new static functions. So yeah, as you can see in JavaScript, it's not that simple. There are many things you need to know. You need to know about the call, you need to know about the prototype and all that stuff. In TypeScript, it's a lot simpler. It looks something like this. So if you want to extend a class, you do class, the name of the class then extends and then you put the class you want to expand. If you have new um, instance um, properties, you can simply add them the same way you used to. And by default, you will also get the, the previous one. So from circle, I'm able to access the, uh, the X and the Y properties, obviously. Um, then you have your constructor. The first thing you want to do in the constructor is call the super. So the super is the equivalent of, of the call over here. So whenever you see point something, this is converted into a super in um, TypeScript. So super refers to the, um, the super class. So for example, this will call the, um, the constructor of my super class. So this will call this constructor. And after that, you can do whatever you want, for example, setting the radius. Now, if I wanted to override a function, so this was the the old behavior. Now what I will do is call the super. So super transform. So this will call that part over there. And then I can do my custom code, for example, setting the radius. If I want to add new static um, 
properties and function I can do it exactly like I used to so I can just do static name equal and so there are a few differences between um, JavaScript and TypeScript so in TypeScript there are additional um, restrictions in order to prevent common mistakes um, so one of them is that all the new um, properties and uh, function needs to be compatible with the um, super version. So for example, if I have x equals zero, then it needs to remain a number. So if it was a number, it needs to remain a number. So if I try to say x equal a string, it will say that it's not compatible. So it applies for the um, instance properties, but also to the functions. So for example, over there, I have a transform function that takes three parameters. And that transform function is not compatible with the previous version because this one needs three parameters while this one only needs two. Um, so you may think that it's not really convenient that it gives me a, an error even though it, the code looks good. Um, but actually if um, there are potential issues with this. So let's take for example this code. So I'm gonna put that there. So let's take for example this code. So there's a function that sets um, the x to zero and the y to zero, it takes a point. So you can give him a circle, it should work. So I call the transform zero one, and I'm expecting it to work. But actually what happens is the new radius will be undefined. And by calling this, it's also going to put my radius to undefined, which is not what I want. So I'm um, TypeScript in order to prevent that kind of bug, it forces you to think about um, those cases and what you need to do is to put them optional so the question mark is for optional and normally when it's optional you also need to handle it um, for example by testing if it's um, undefined or actually not undefined so that code would actually be valid so another special thing about TypeScript is that you not only generate the um, instance variable and function but also the static ones which is not what happens in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, um, if we have, let's say, this um, static function, get by index, if I try to access it with circle, this will simply be undefined. But in TypeScript, it will actually be defined. So we'll be able to call this, and this will call this function over here. I personally don't really use that feature, but it's there um, if you want to use it. Now, one thing to know is that like the instance um, properties and function, the static one needs to remain compatible with the previous version. So if I were to um, to create a new version of get by index, um, so first of all, over here, I'm gonna say that this list is a list of points. Um, so my new function get by index, I could not like return zero because zero is not compatible with a point. One thing I could do however is return a new circle. Circle. Because a circle is compatible with a point because a circle has all the properties and even more than a point. So this is the definition of, of compatible. It needs to have the, the same features. Um, and you can also do that with um, the, the instance variable. So for example, I have my list. It used to be a list of point, but now I could say that it's a list of circle. And it will work because like I said, a circle is a point. So I guess that's pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the notation on the screen to go check out my next video where I will talk about multi-files project in TypeScript.